general structure of shipping industry, liner and tramp services. We all know the world economic situation and the world trade are very closely related and consequently whatever developments, whether positive or negative, take place in the former have a direct impact on the latter. In this lesson, we will study characteristics of shipping industries and structure of shipping services. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain the characteristics of shipping industries, discuss the liner ships and tramp shipping, and explain the structure of shipping services. Shipping industry has certain special characters. Sea or ocean is a permanent way and it requires no capital expenditure in its construction like those of railway or roads or air transportation. No annual maintenance is required. It is open to all and there is freedom of movement except for restrictions imposed by the countries on their territorial waters. Terminal facilities needed for ships are generally maintained by port authorities and shipping companies can avail them on payment of charges. The shipping companies need not invest in terminal facilities and it is this respect also that shipping differs railways and roadways. Capital expenditure in shipping industry depends on the type and size of the vessel selected, the nature of trade served and the time when the purchase is made. Shipping requires small capital expenditure in the initial stages. Only a small investment in the purchase of ships has to be made. Once the ship leaves a seaway, ways of the voyage are provided by the nature at free of cost. The capital investment in shipping is a small multiple of annual receipts, particularly as compared to railways. Since the capital investment cannot be reduced and most of the operating expenses in shipping are constant, the shipping profits very finely and quickly react to the prevailing state of the trade. The investment made in shipping is mainly in the ships purchased. In case one trade route is not profitable, the ships can be moved to other routes and thus the investment made in not a dead loss as in the case of railways where capital is tied to the fixed routes and is completely irrecoverable. The working or operating expenses in shipping may be divided into constant variable charges. Variable charges represents the smaller percentage and move with the volume of traffic. They may include bunker or fuel charges, port, dock or light dues, stevedoring, loading and unloading charges and claims of short delivery and damage of goods. The shipping income is derived mainly from the freight and passenger traffic but the bulk of the income is derived from freight traffic. In order to trade, a merchant ship must be registered with an appropriate national authority and legally she will then be governed by the laws and protected by the country whose flag she flies. Liner ship owners engaged on the same trade usually operate with some measure of agreement among themselves. This agreement may be informal or formal and usually covers such items as freight rates, the number of sailings in a given time, working conditions, etc. In fact, in many cases the only factor left open to competition is the efficiency and quality of service offered. These associations of liner ship owners are known as conferences. A liner conference is a group of two or more vessels operating carriers which provides international liner services for the carriage of cargo on a particular route or routes within specified geographical limits on uniform or common freight rates and on other mutually agreed conditions. There are over 360 liner conferences in the world which cover various trades. As distinguished from a conference, a rate agreement merely specifies the conditions under which the signatories to the agreement have to charge freight rates. These ships operate on the principle of tramping and move from one place to another as per requirements of the trade. Their freight rates are freely negotiated between the ship or carterer and the ship owner and are solely guided by forces of demand and supply for such ships.
Unlike a liner ship operating under a conference system, tramp ship takes maximum advantage of the freedom of high seas and flexibility in movement on various trade routes. Tramp vessels have no fixed routes or schedule of arrival or departure. The routes and the schedule of tramp ships is regulated through the requirement of the shipper charterer. Voyage Charter Here ships are chartered for a specific voyage. X for example, Chennai to Singapore to carry 5000 tons of iron ore. Normally, traders prefer to go in for the voyage charter. Time Charter here, the ships is chartered for a specific period of time. X for example, from 1st January to 31st June. The charterer may employ the ship on the basis of his own requirements. Demise Charter Here, the ship without floating personnel, fuel, etc. is chartered on a time charter basis. Shipping services are organized according to the nature and trading requirements of goods traffic in international trade. The goods traffic can be divided into two broad categories namely bulk cargo and break bulk or general cargo. Bulk cargo whether dry or liquid belongs to the category of primary commodities such as ores, fertilizers, etc. Food grains, crude oils, petroleum, edible oils and move as ship loads. The break bulk or general cargo on the other hand refers to the manufactured or semi-manufactured, processed or semi-processed goods that move invariably in different types of packing like cases, crates, bales, rolls, bags, etc. In shipping parlance, these items are generally referred to as ocean transport general merchandise. This classification of goods traffic in world trade between bulk cargo system and general merchandise is extremely important because of the significant differences in the nature and marketing characteristics of these two categories of cargoes and consequently in their transportation requirements. The shipping services catering to the requirement of bulk cargo movement in world trade is known as tram shipping or chartering while the shipping services required for the movement of break bulk or general cargo is known as liner shipping. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Capital expenditure in shipping industry depends on the type and size of the vessels selected, the nature of trade served and the time when the purchase is made. Right or wrong? Right. Tramp ship owners engaged on the same trade usually operate with some measure of agreement amongst themselves. Right or wrong? Wrong. Liner ships operate on the principle of tramping and move from one place to another as per requirements of the trade. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The ships carry a sizable quantity of goods traffic in world trade and the fluctuations will have an impact on the movement of seaborne trade. Shipping industry has certain special characters. Sea or ocean is a permanent way and it requires no capital expenditure in its construction like those of railways or roads or air transportation. No annual maintenance is required. Terminal facilities needed for ships are generally maintained by port authorities and shipping companies can avail them on payment of charges. Capital expenditure in shipping industry depends on the type and size of the vessel selected, the nature of trade served and the time when the purchase is made. The working or operating expenses in ships or shipping may be divided into constant variable charges. Variable charges represents the smaller percentage and move with the volume of traffic. Liner ship owners engaged on the same trade usually operate with some measure of agreement amongst themselves. This agreement may be informal or formal and usually covers such items as freight rates, the number of sailings in a given time, working conditions, etc. A liner conference is a group of two or more vessels operating carriers which provides international liner services for the carriage of cargo 
on a particular route or routes within specified geographical limits on uniform or common freight rates and on other mutually agreed conditions. Tramp ships operate on the principle of tramping and move from one place to another as per requirements of the trade. Shipping services are organized according to the nature and trading requirements of goods traffic in international trade.